You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey guys, welcome to another informative episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Pablo. And my name is Roberto, and this is episode 731. Que paso? And we are glad that you are with us today. <laughs> Hoping that you are having a fabulous day. Welcome to Nuevo Mexico. <laughs> Come visit us. Get your passports ready. Get some papayas. <laughs> eat chilies. Uh, y huevos chili. rancheros. If you haven't been in New Mexico and had our green and red chili... You need to. You're missing out. Actually, my sister said, there's green chili on everything. What is the deal with the green chili? (laughs) Fair enough. Could be a little overwhelming if you're not used to it. (laughs) Yeah, I suppose that's true. I suppose that green chili, Uh, jelly, and yeah, yeah. all kinds of good stuff. Sorry, Liz, if you're listening to this. (laughs) Anyway. She's right. Um, But yeah, no, it's a fun place to be. And today we've got a great topic to talk about. Thermal imaging XTs inspections. What's the best lens option to get? What is there a good al- alternate to an XT camera that still provides the capability that you're looking for? Hmm. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, but anyway, big special thank you to our friends at MyEnergen.com. Energen, as you know, we've talked about them many times before. They created portable battery charging units. They're really awesome units. What they do is allow you to charge up to four batteries at one time for your Mavic, your Phantom, or Phantom 3, whatever drone you fly, a 4S or 3S, and they've even got a new 6S charger coming out. But for now, if you want to save some money on one of those portable battery chargers because you're like me, you live the drone life, and you're out and about all the time, you've got to use the discount code DRONEUM10 for the M10 battery charger or DRONEUA40 for the A40 battery charger or DRONEUP40 for the P40 battery charger. Check them out. But Rob, let's go ahead and let's hear that funky question. Hello, Rob and Paul. My name is Jordan, and I'm with Effective UAV Solutions up in Canada. Thank you both for your time and efforts you put into sharing with your drone community, and I look forward to each and every podcast you guys put out. My company has recently been approved to work with a local asset company in my hometown, and we'll be doing a different array of inspections from dams to power lines. In regards to thermal imaging sensors, I currently own an Inspire 1 and am, of course, considering the Zenmuse XT. One of my questions of the sensor is, out of all the different lenses and resolution options for the 30Hz model, which do you personally find is the best bang for your buck to buy for a wide range of work? My other consideration is purchasing the unique H520 and its thermal camera. Does it compare to the Zenmuse XT Professional? Cost-wise, I think the Zenmuse XT still outweighs the complete unique H520 and its thermal camera, but I can also understand the added benefits or uses of a new UAB type. What are your thoughts on these investments? Thanks again for all you guys do for the community. eh? All right. He's got a good question. Yeah. Thank you, Jordan, for sending your question in. And by the way, guys, if you have a question, go to askdroneu.com like Jordan did. Send your question in. We like to say that if you're thinking about something, so are a lot of other people. And I would imagine that's true in this case as well, maybe a smaller subsection of the drone community, but nonetheless, people are wondering about this kind of thing. It's interesting to compare a camera to a, an entire drone setup, but that's really what we're doing here. Well, it's just because the XT is so expensive. You're right. talking a, yeah. a, a lot of money. So exactly. I mean, it's a significant amount of money, um, but you know, there's a reason that it costs that much. So, I mean, it is... Um, It is pretty significant. I'm trying to look up the specs of the Seago or, yeah, Seago camera from Unique. Now, we have a Unique H520, and I've asked them for their thermal imaging setup, and I've never gotten one. I remember a while ago they were saying that it wasn't available just yet, so I'm not even sure that he would be able to buy this camera. Hmm. Um, But I think it's important to discuss a couple things. So, first of all, he said, what lens option, if I do go with an XT, should I get? Just understand that your lens option is going to have an effect on how you do certain jobs. So if you're going to do mapping, for example, if you're going to do like radiometric thermography modeling and mapping, you should probably get a sensor towards the higher end of your lens options. So you have the option of the 7.5, the 9mm, the 13mm, and the 19mm. 
the 19 millimeter is going to be your most kind of quote unquote zoomed in option, right? You're going to have to fly a little bit uh, further from things, a little bit higher from things, but you will have more detail in a smaller area. If you're using like a 7.5 millimeter lens, it's going to be a much wider field of view. You're going to have to fly closer to things and you're going to, if you're doing mapping and modeling, you're going to have to fly really close to kind of get the same level of detail or resolution that you would with a 19 millimeter. So if you're kind of a newer pilot and you're flying, uh, when I don't even say newer, a lot of the intermediate pilots, I would still feel fall into this category. Um, but if you're not comfortable with flying close to things, then I would recommend getting the 19 millimeter. Um, I think that the best option in all honesty is probably like the 13 millimeter because it's the best of both worlds. Hmm. You may still have to fly close to certain things lower for radiometric thermography mapping, which by the way, you would need the XTR, not the XT, just to make sure that you guys understand that. The difference is essentially whether the imaging system is calibrated or not, calibrated for ambient or external temperature. That's why it's so important to have the radiometric model because if you do not have a calibrated sensor there's no way that you're going to get data that's similar from one image to the other meaning if the camera resets or cycles for example you could have totally different color palettes and whatnot um, like for example if you're doing a map and model and one window shows up orange is red and then the camera recalibrates and now it's yellow it's not going to mesh those images together very well mm. in pix4d or whatever you're using um, now, that being said, he asked the question of, you know, is it smart to get a more economical version like the unique Seago camera? If he's doing inspections, Rob, I think it's really important that he has probably some of the best equipment. Mm -hmm. Not only is the best equipment going to provide better details and results for him to maintain the competitive advantage, may make sure that he has a solid business model. But also, it's going to be a lot easier to complete these jobs. So you've got to think about things in time versus money because, you know, with the Seago camera, I've never used one. I know you do have some controls on screen, but let's say that it's not available yet or let's say that uh, it's difficult to get one and you wanted to use something like a Raptor backpack. The Raptor backpack is a gimbal for the FLIRView Pro. Now, the issue with these cheaper solutions is that you don't have the ability to control these solutions on the ground. You cannot change the color palette. You cannot change the cycle rate. You cannot change a lot of other features just like recording pictures and videos if you want to switch back from one to the other. You have all of that and so much more control with the XT because it is being operated through the DJI system of applications. Now, that being said, if you're doing these roof inspections and you're basing your uh, time, like let's say you're getting paid $800 an hour or whatever to fly these thermal cameras, mm -hmm. then your your time is very valuable. Thus, I think going the XT route is kind of a no-brainer solution because you're going to be up in the air faster. You're going to have a better quality imaging sensor. You're going to have the ability to control that sensor from the ground. That's really, really important. Um, having that control ability from the ground is going to make your life so much easier uh, in a way that I think is going to be really difficult to even understand. Now, if you really want to get crazy, you just go over the M210 route and you fly the FLIR and another camera at the same time right. to match those images side by side, and then you're really in business. But in this particular case, because he already has the Inspire 1 and he can just put the XT on it, that it's the way you're talking, it's a no-brainer. And by the way, if it is an Inspire 1, you're going to have to get the older model of the XT in order for it to work. Just clarification. Hmm. So, yeah, important point. that's important. Um, and I kind of missed your point because when you said that, I was like, oh, wait. Something popped into your head. No, I was just saying that it sounds in your mind or to me that in your mind is pretty clear. Well, yeah, because, I mean, it's it's is it a lofty investment? Yeah, you're paying nine grand below, like, just for the camera for the XT. But... The ease of use, if he's doing, if he has a contract for a lot of these jobs, you know, one, I kind of feel bad for the guy because he probably didn't plan for the acquisition of equipment before the contract. He probably didn't build that into his system. I hope he did. Yeah. But, you know, there's a propensity that he didn't. Um, and that being said, if he's got this contract and he's got a guarantee of work and he wants to provide the highest level of detail of work, then, yeah, I would say the XT hands down, no questions asked. If he's limited on budget, I would say maybe an Inspire 1 with a Z3 camera so you can get some zoom. And then, you know, you fly the uh, the FLIR View Pro on the back. But again, it's going to be so much more work. You could end up spending two to three times hmm. more time just for one job because you can't control the angle of the camera, the the tilt of the camera. Um, you know, you're you 
put it up in the air and you click pictures and you take a bunch of pictures and you don't know you know how much overlap there's going to be in those pictures if you want to do modeling or mapping so i think for ease of use for time efficiency i mean if we are creating a business which is creating the most efficient systems possible right. to get the best output then i think the xt is definitely the way to go yeah i mean i think you bring up great points in terms of how does one analyze the situation because obviously it's way more than just what does it cost relative to what does the alternative cost and all of these things that you've mentioned sound to me like in a relatively short period of time will through the analysis of the actual dollars spent in time and processing etc cetera, etc cetera, um, you're probably going to be better off in the long run making the XT purchase and by long run I'm not talking five years yeah I mean depending on how many jobs you've got probably a year and then after that it's gravy yeah so sounds like it makes pretty good sense to go the XT yeah, I think Even though so. It's more money. And looking at the specs of the thermal camera on the uh, unique website for the Seago, it's not telling me the resolution of the thermal camera, which makes me think it's the smaller one, the 330 or 336. So, yeah, I would say just based on that alone, I mean, like, I love the premise that this is built on, but um, I'm just not sure that it would provide the level of detail necessary. I mean, you know, we have that um, kit of what a inspection deliverable looks like, and there's some very detailed stuff. You know, they're using a Ranger camera, which is a super high-end mm -hmm. thermal imaging camera. So I would say if you're going to compete with the boys that are on the ground, you definitely need to go XT. Yeah. So Cool. Well, that's going to do it for us today. If you have a question, go to askjoinu.com. If you want to take our intro to thermography class, that's with John McBride. Just go to thedroneu.com, check it out, and uh, make sure that you, uh, you go there. Actually, we came up with a new, ah, yeah, droneu.community. So if you go to droneu.community, you can also check out all the classes. Wow, we've had over 1.6 million downloads. That's crazy. Pretty cool. Yeah, wow, 2017 was a good year. Anyway, all right, guys, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. And I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You. <laughs>